In swirling water, a boy paddles a kayak past a marker. He could not steer the kayak with his hands alone. The paddle serves as a simple machine that makes it possible to control the kayak. A girl helps her teacher carry a long board. The teacher weighs about twice as much as the student. Yet the girl is going to lift him three feet or one meter off the ground. The girl has lifted her teacher using the board and a metal sawhorse. The board and sawhorse together are known as a simple machine. A machine is a tool that makes work easier. A girl presses against a walnut with all her might, but the force of her muscles cannot crack the shell. Although she may think that her muscles are working hard, a scientist would say she is not doing any work. To a scientist, work is using a force to make something move. The girl has not moved the sides of the nutshell to crack the nut. The girl easily cracks the walnut with a nutcracker, a simple machine. She uses the force of her muscles to squeeze the nutcracker. A force must always be used to make a machine do work. A simple machine cannot create a force, but it does make work easier. teenage boy shovels topsoil into a wheelbarrow. His job is to move the pile of dirt from the driveway to the yard above, where his brother is raking. When the wheelbarrow is full, it weighs too much for the boys to lift it over the wall. But with a simple machine, one boy can move the wheelbarrow to the upper level. Using an old door as a ramp, one of the boys pushes the wheelbarrow up to the yard. A ramp is a simple machine called an inclined plane. A plane means a flat surface, and inclined means sloping. A teenager pushes his motorcycle up a ramp toward the back of a van. The inclined plane helps support the weight of the motorcycle. It takes less force to push the motorcycle up a ramp than it does to lift the cycle straight up. A longer board gives a more gradual slope. The more gradual the slope, the less force is needed to push the motorcycle up the inclined plane. This girl is pedaling her bicycle up a steep hill. The hillside is an inclined plane. A flight of stairs is another inclined plane with its surface broken into steps. This girl is doing work as she walks up the stairs. The force of her muscles is moving the weight of her body up the steps. When a stairway winds around in a spiral, it forms a second type of simple machine called a screw. A screw changes a circular motion into an up and down motion. The man has climbed up to another floor by walking around on the stairs. In this case, the man goes around, but the screw does not turn. Sometimes the screw itself goes around. The close-up shows the kind of screw that holds things together. A carpenter uses such a screw to join two pieces of wood. As he twists the screw in a circular motion, it goes down into the wood. A workman pulls a handle that turns another kind of screw known as a jack screw. It helps lift very heavy objects, such as part of a building. The jack screw increases the force so that one man's effort can lift many tons. This entire building has been raised off the ground so it can be moved to a new site. The workman on the left adjusts a jack screw that can raise or lower part of the building. A 
wedge is a third type of simple machine. This metal wedge can help split the big log. The narrow end enters the wood first. As the wider part goes in, it forces the log apart. A boy has just struck the wedge, pounding it into the log. The shape of the wedge increases the force of the boy's pounding. A wedge also changes the direction of the force. The downward force of the pounding is changed to a sideways force that splits the log. Have you ever thought of a sewing needle as a machine? A needle is another wedge. The sharp, narrow point spreads apart the fibers in a piece of material. Then the wide part of the needle and the thread can be drawn through the fabric. Most tools that cut or spread something apart are wedges. A girl cuts a board with a saw. A close look shows that a saw's teeth are sharp little wedges. This German Shepherd's teeth are also wedges that can tear apart meat and other food. A wedge is a natural shape, found not only in animals' teeth, but also in their claws. A woodpecker's bill is a powerful wedge. This red-headed woodpecker has used its pointed bill to peck a nesting hole in a tree. The inclined plane, the wedge, and the screw form one group of simple machines. They reduce the amount of force needed to do work. They may also change the direction of the force. There are three other simple machines, the lever, the pulley, and the wheel and axle. A boy presses down on a board to lift a heavy log. The board rests on a stack of bricks. Used this way, the board and the bricks make a lever. Although used for play, a seesaw is really a lever. The long board is known as the lever arm. The board rests on a fixed support called the fulcrum. With the fulcrum in the middle, two boys of equal weight sit balanced on the lever arm. When the fulcrum is moved closer to one end of the board, one boy can lift two others. The weight of the one boy provides the force to move the lever arm. The weight to be lifted, his two friends, is called the resistance. Every lever has a force, a fulcrum, and the resistance. A girl uses a claw hammer as a lever to remove a nail. Her muscles supply the force on the handle. The place where the hammerhead touches the board is the fulcrum. The nail is the resistance. A bottle opener is another type of lever. The force of the boy's muscles lifts up on the handle. The fulcrum is the end of the opener that presses down on the bottle cap. The resistance is the edge of the cap that will be lifted up by the opener. The tweezers used to remove a splinter are another type of lever. This lever has two lever arms joined at one end. The force is applied in the middle by squeezing the lever arms together. A pulley is another simple machine. Each of these two pulleys has a wheel with a groove that holds a rope. A boy raises two flags high above his head by pulling down on a rope. The rope runs through a pulley atop the flagpole. Without a pulley, the boy would have to climb the flagpole and pull the flags up. A pulley also helps lift heavy objects. An engineer struggles to raise a piece of machinery called a valve. His friend keeps the valve from bumping into the cabinet. Only one strand of rope supports the weight of the valve, so the engineer has to pull down 
with a force equal to the weight of the valve. In this system of two pulleys, sometimes called a block and tackle, the weight of the valve is divided between two strands of rope. Now the engineer has to pull only half as hard as before, but he has to pull the rope twice as far. This pulley system increases the force. In a five-strand pulley, the weight of the valve is divided among five strands of rope. Now the force needed to raise the valve is only one-fifth the weight of the valve, but the engineer has to pull the rope five times farther than he did with a single pulley. A boy turns a wheel to steer a sailboat. The wheel is connected to a rod called an axle. The wheel and axle is another simple machine. A doorknob is also a wheel and axle machine. The knob or handle is like a wheel. This doorknob has been pulled out to show the axle. When the knob is twisted, the axle turns and moves the catch of the door. On some wheel and axle machines, a crank is used instead of a wheel. A boy turns the crank of a pencil sharpener in complete circles. The crank turns the axle, and the axle turns blades inside the sharpener. Sometimes a wheel and axle turns another wheel. A bicycle pedal is attached to a wheel with teeth called a gear wheel. The teeth of the gear wheel fit into links of a chain. As the pedals make the gear wheel go around, the chain moves and turns another gear wheel in the center of the big rear wheel. This big wheel makes the bike move forward. The face of this clock has been removed to show some gear wheels inside. The teeth of the gear wheels fit directly into each other so that when one gear wheel goes around, they all turn. As these gear wheels go around, they turn the hands of the clock. On an egg beater, the large gear wheel fits directly into two smaller gear wheels that turn the beaters. Each time the handle turns the large wheel around once, the smaller gear wheels go around five times. The gears of the egg beater increase the speed, since the beaters turn five times faster than the handle does. An egg beater also changes the direction of the force. The boy turns the handle in an up and down circle. The beaters go around in a horizontal motion to mix the cake batter in the bowl. A girl uses a hand drill, a complex machine. A complex machine is made up of two or more simple machines. The crank handle works as a wheel and axle machine that turns the gear wheels. The drill itself is a screw, and the sharp drill point is a wedge. Two students snip colored paper with scissors, another complex machine. A pair of scissors works as a lever. The cutting edges of its blades are wedges. All these common objects contain one or more of the six simple machines. The inclined plane, the screw, the wedge, the lever, the pulley, and the wheel and axle. Simple machines can make work easier in three ways. Some machines increase the force. The wedge helps a lumberjack split a log. The shape of the wedge increases the force of the man's pounding when he uses a sledgehammer. Some machines, like the bicycle, increase the speed. As this man races, his feet turn the pedals in a small circle. The rear wheel turns in a much larger circle, covering more distance. Simple machines may also change the direction of force. The oars of a racing boat work as levers. When the oarsmen pull the oar handles one way, the oar blades push the other way against the water. Machines help us do work every day. As you look around you, 
See how many simple machines you can find.